And we talk to these players a lot about a four count or a beat that you're playing this game at. It's just a 4-4 beat. And if you've got that ball in your hands longer than two seconds, you're holding up your team. Our belief is that this offense begins immediately when you get the basketball in your hands. Everybody has a programmed route that they can run. And anybody can take that person's place. And as they go up the court, they fill out the court in a certain manner that allows this offense to, to format itself and then to attack. Responsible for nine of the last 15 NBA championships, Phil Jackson and the Triangle Offense have quickly become the words of legend in basketball history. With the help of its author, Tex Winter, the Triangle Offense has returned to the Lakers this season with a main character who brings back memories of Jackson's past. The NBA's all-time winningest coach has had a season of new challenges, but all the while teaching the same old tricks. And as his players learn the most successful offense in NBA history, so do you, the fan, as Phil Jackson explains the Triangle Offense in his own words. This is In My Own Words by Phil Jackson. Basketball 101, particularly Laker basketball 101, involves the triangle offense and the system uh, tonight that we're going to uh, talk about has a coaching staff here. Uh, Tex Winter obviously is going to talk about it and do an introduction, but we also have Andy Meyer and John Sally, whose humor and uh, off-the-cuff remarks are always interesting to hear. Okay, we, we run out of a two-guard front. We have what we call a push guard. He pushes the ball strong up the court. He comes up the floor. We have lane runners. who are out and running, filling, playing the full court game on this penetration we talked about. We like for our second guard to work with the push guard and stay slightly behind the ball. We call that lag pass. And oftentimes, if we can't make the guard wing entry to the strong side right now because of pressing defensive situation, he, that's called a lag pass. So as we swing the ball, the lag pass keys this whole action. All five players key off of this lag pass. They know what happens. In this case now we'll just say that she goes ahead and forms a triangle and this is the wing coming into the post and Sally might be Stay over there, Sally, please. You didn't read the book. <laughs> We're working out of this spacing, which Coach mentioned. The spacing itself means that if a player, if, if they want to double up or two-time this player, they've got to run to 15 to 18 foot distance, which means somebody's going to be open. If the balls move quick, if they try to rotate, they can't move as fast as the ball moves. So this is our basic working position. This is a sideline triangle. And we're going to make a two pass to the center and he's going to make a speed cut right on the pass down the baseline. Sally, if he'll do it, is going to run a screen for Anna. And she's coming off that pick, coming back out. And as Anna makes the speed cut and comes off of a screen here, she's going to head back for defensive balance, but is alert because she's apt to be the person who's going to get a shot out of this. So you come right on in, Anna, kind of the, right into your wing spot, yeah. Kurt is going to make a speed cut over the top. And coach, the postman, unless it's Shaq, is going to look for those cutters. <laughs> First cutter, coach will give, if head and shoulders by the defense, a drop pass. Okay? Kurt, if he's open, he's going to get the pass, so he watches the ball. And as he comes in here, he's going to screen for Sally. And believe it or not, we're going to let Sally try to make a basket. Pop up there and shoot, Sally. Right there. <laughs> Give me the ball. Give me the ball. But you see, we had a rebounder here. That's the important part. <laughs> he said, no. Okay. I, I want Sally to make a decent shot here. Come on, Sally. Come up here and hit a jumper. Now we're going to be here. Right there. There you go. See that? Okay. All right, let's eat. In this setup, who's representing Kobe? Who would represent Lamar? 
In other words, thank you. <laughs> Key system in uh, the triangle offense, obviously, you can pass to any of your four t teammates and uh, the key pass to the post, obviously covered. And now we're going to talk about the two pass to the top of the key, which has many options in it, but here goes. But now if we can't go inside, because the defense is dropping off, they're sagging like crazy, then if they're, but maybe they're dropping down in here, but they're giving us this pass here. So that was the two pass to the post. This is the two pass to the top of the circle. Furthest player from the ball, but probably the most important person in the offense. Thank you, Tex. Not because of his, not because of the name, but because of the position. <laughs> now on the two pass, he's going to step away from this defensive person. He'll maybe hold the defense up, hold him up, and he's going to pop to that ball. And we call that pinch post. You got the two-man game. You got a three-man game here. Kirk's running the rebound screen you. cut. Jeannie's coming off. And coach is punching in. He'll, he'll, he'll punch in. Rubber ball. <laughs> it's always the equipment's fault. All right, too fast the top of the key. 35 to 40 options. A lot of teams call them plays. Right, we can run screen roll here. We run two-man game here. We could just counter back to Annie coming out of this pick in the corner. Now, if he goes two pass, Brian, top of the circle guard, can go pinch post. Go ahead. Or dribble weave to Annie. Right now, as a counter. Sally reverses back for rebound position. Annie comes off looking for the driver, the jump shot, or possibly the looking inside to punch in. Hey, Tex, in, in this offense, in this setup, who's representing Kobe? Who would represent Lamar? In other words, thank you. <laughs> well done, Mr. Jackson. I am actually playing the Kobe Bryant role, okay? Which means that I'm going to follow the ball a lot. I'll be still following the ball, but I'm going to be off ball until I get to an offensive scoring position. Okay? Let's, let's, let's do that. Show. That'd be Chris uh, Just make the pass here. Now, we formed a triangle, yeah. And now we formed a triangle. Yeah, we call that a strong side entry, strong side fill. So it was just strong side entry. They didn't have to lag the ball and go in on the other side. Why is it strong side? Because this is ball side. That's off ball side or weak side. So this is strong side. We filled it going to the corner. Now we're going to show you another two pass. Now we have our third pass. Inside of this is our back door step. And that is the farthest man away from the ball. And that's our weak side forward. Overplay at the top, sinking on defense, perhaps the corner's filled, and our weak side wing is going to step into position where we can exploit the overplay of the defense. It was right there, though, Eddie. Look, draw the defense in, but see the fact that that man's stepping, throw away from the defense, and create that situation. Now, doesn't give the ball to Annie this time. He has an option to go on his own. I'm creating a rebound screen cut. There's Brian coming off me. Dribble weave, step back, post up. We're still back in a position where we can operate in our offense. The moment is when this ball player arrives at that position. And when he arrives at that line, bang, everybody has to move. We would say the very first principle is the moment of truth. I always ask Tex to talk about this principle. So I'm going to have him talk about it. You got your breath back again, Coach? Oh, yeah. Okay. Bam. He's going to talk about a moment of truth and a line of deploy or a line of truth here. They're two separate things, but I think they're really important to know when you're watching the game because this connects to everything else that happens as we form a triangle. If you're, if, if, if you're going to try to be effective out of a two-guard front, you must understand how the two guards function together. Wherever the ball is, three foot in front of him, or approximately three feet, if you draw an imaginary line across the court, is the line of truth. That's the line of truth. Now, as he comes up to the line of truth, the, the moment of truth is look for the lag pass or look for your entry pass. Now, Tex has explained the moment of truth and the line of truth, two different things. The line is where the defense is at, 
The moment is when this ball player arrives at that position. And when he arrives at that line, bang, everybody has to move. So Andy makes that cut. And we're going to run what we call a blind pig here, which is a pressure release. Cut. Straight to the basket, Andy, because your man's overplaying. Now Kurt is going to step in the vacuum. Andy's coming off this double screen, Andy. There goes Brian over the top. Here comes a double screen. And here we are. Go ahead, Andy. Stay, take the wing spot. Where are we? Right back in your offense. You broke down front line pressure. You broke down the pressure the guards have. Kurt could go in, big in, little out, set a pick for Brian to come back to the top of the key. We're looking at the triangle. There's a two pass to the top. And he's running a rebound screen cut with me. Good. Now, every person that's on the court has a responsibility to react at this moment of truth. The moment that position is right here, we have to react. I'm coming out to the wing to receive the ball. Sally's coming up on a high if I'm overplayed. Hit the high post. I reverse because I was overplayed. Okay? Meanwhile, these two guys are running a squeeze at the top, Andy, with O'Brien. Kurt setting a pick for me down here on the lane. But maybe he hits Brian. I'm coming around this. We're all involved in this. Not there. Brian hits me, goes and fills the corner. And he's back at the top. Sally went to the back door. Step. One of our principles is we're always in the offense. We're always, wherever the ball is on the floor, we're operating right from there. And all five players knows what, the, what their actions are going to be. All right, so we've come to a position here where we're talking about moment of truth to get to our breakdown position against pressure defense. All four players have to be available. That's one of the principles of a sound offense Hit the first to one receive a pass. Hit the first one and so I'm the wing, not here. High post automatic, not there. Blind pig, that's always the one we use in the pressure situation. Our easiest one is the very first one the tech showed you, guard to guard lag. Okay. Now run a second guard, Phil. All right. He's, now, giving, he's giving you the whole book. Not just giving them a little bit of the whole book. Now, the variety of ways in which we form a triangle can be very different. Brian's going to give me the basketball and run a diagonal, and we're going to form a triangle on the weak side. Here's a solo, and you saw a lot of solos at some time. Okay? Now, the triangle is going to be on the opposite side of the floor. Annie, you're coming to the top of the floor. Kurt and Brian are running interchange, and you follow the ball center. Oh, it's, uh, take it, assume the corner, uh, Kurt, on this. Stay, Annie, and just follow the ball. All right, hold it again. Let's do it once again so that you understand. This is a triangle on the weak side so that we're looking for this guy now in the gut, looking for, which was Shaq for a long time. Shaq follows it. Keep following it. Keep following it. And we go to what? Triangle. So you're back into triangle, but you ran a solo on this side of the floor and you exemplified the position or you magnified the position that the center was playing and made the defense have to stretch and now you come back to the system. So there's one of the ways that we get to the triangle without showing it right off the bat, okay? Now run a second guard, Phil. All right. He's, now, giving, he's giving you the whole book. No, I'm just giving him a little bit of the whole book. We have a situation where this defense is creating a lot of pressure. Annie goes ahead early because she sees that she's not in a lag position. Come on in here, Annie. I got to have the basketball. And now she's filled the corner from that position. We had strong side entry, strong side fill. We just rang strong side entry, weak guard, second guard fill. And we get to our offense. That allows Kurt a backdoor step. When Annie makes that cut, that really opens up this backdoor step because Brian is, is over here on this side of the floor giving the ball into the wing and we have an option out of that that really works well. Now, at this moment of truth, go ahead Annie, go back to your original starting spot in the four lane. At this moment of truth, sometimes a guard has enough momentum or the guards are playing in a team pair in which we ask Annie to button hook and Brian to cross grain dribble entry. So Annie's going to button hook and 
Brian's going to cross grain. He gave an entrance pass. And now we have what? We have a center opposite sequence again, or Sally could go in. That's his option to go in, my option to stay and play now. I have to play a new position, which is the pinch post. You're at the top end, Coach, center of the floor. We keep using Sally. We're going to have to give him a pro contract. <laughs> he may push him across and ask for the ball because his man's playing in the lane. You know, now he has what? An open opportunity with three quarters of the court in a space where he's isolated. Got it? So there's a lot of these options. So there's a dribble entry by the guard. You'll see that often. That was a cross grain with a dribble entry. Come on back out here again, Brian. One of, the, one of the key principles to keep in mind in this offense is that the, the player with the ball hits the first open man. Don't wait for the second person. Hit the first open man in the offense. If you see two open people, then you have a choice of which one you want to hit. But you hit the first open man. It's predicated on player and ball movement with a purpose. Now, as a last resort, we're just going to make a direct line entry. So he's going to drive me right down to the baseline, and Annie's going to assume the top of the key, and he's going to swing the ball, and Kurt's going to go to pinch post, and he's going to go right into the post off a of rub cut this time. Here goes Lamar. And he's got a post-up opportunity in the lane in a very simple action. What is the one, maybe two things that the layman can Let's look at to say, all right, the Lakers are running it well tonight? When we're watching Laker basketball this year, what is the one, maybe two things that the layman can Let's look at to say, all right, the Lakers are running it well tonight or things are going to work? What, what do we need to look at? I think we've, I think we've covered the things that you'll identify it when you put the game on TV and you'll see, you know, like a third of the screen or a third of the court on the screen. What's happening with these guards when they bring the ball up? We don't want them having to turn their back and bring the ball down and, you know, muscle the ball into the offensive end. We want them to recognize the moment of truth, make an appropriate pass to any of their four teammates to get this penetration. This is what we're trying to do, first principle, right? Got that, Billy? First principles, penetration. So the ball's got to get beyond the front line of the defense. That's like a military term. You got to get by that front line, right? So once the ball's in the front line and the forming of the triangle, you'll see that happening. You'll see that formation of the triangle happening. How quick do they activate that offense? This two pass, two pass, two pass, or two pass. Those four two passes being the key pass that activates a series of actions. Now, a lot of teams call them plays. We call them series of actions because, as you saw, all four of the guys can still be open after those series of options, but not one person's designated to get the ball. Everybody has an opportunity to score. And then when you're through with those series of options, you're still back in your offense where you can go back and run it again. Okay? So those are the things that I think you will identify right away. When we run this game plan, and we have the ball maybe 90, 85 to 90 times or possessions in a game. Brian is sitting on the bench charting. Kurt used to do it when he was a novice. He's charting. Tex was the man that started doing this. What is happening on every sequence? We can say PP, pitch post, 15-foot jump shot on every possession and know as we read down every possession in a quarter what we've done the last six, seven, eight, nine times down the floor. These are the things that have happened. We've been successful or unsuccessful here, and this is what we want to do. When we run 85 possessions, we think we're going to probably get into the triangle 50 times. So that's about 60, 65% of the time. There's a lot of free action. There's a lot of live ball. There's a lot of free throws. But in those 50 possessions, how successful were we, and what's our percentage that we got, and what was the highest rate in which we attacked a team? Some teams, it's going to be two pass to top. Some teams it's going to be two pass to the post. And other times we're going to have, they're going to take away both those passes and we're going to have to use the counters, which can be the backdoor step or the two pass to the corner. So those are the things that you'll see and identify when you look at the game on TV and you'll see us out on timeout and we're sitting out here in a little cluster. I'm asking Brian, what's happened? What's our percentage? What rate are we working at? And where are we being successful? Well, it started out as Tex Winter having something to do to stay busy during the course of the game so he didn't rag on me all the time. 
about what was going on or yell at the referees or whatever, and it kind of kept his nervous energy limited. But it became a great tool because we walk out on the floor and we could, you know, check out what was happening in that quarter and see what was working, what wasn't. Well, during the course of this year, you know, most of our offense has been run with Kobe on the weak side, and so he's either got an isolation or a pinch post action sitting there. It's been very fruitful to us. Great passing and teamwork. Out of the offense.